Kwe, telwi duwijik muine ajij, esi sohni dlewi ni na migma, ah wajigwe ab unamagi. Nigma abuk chija, ah bohadlana. Ah wal dai begis nudio, ah wal awalak, kuman giskun wadl tosop ta angoin tlugwahan. Hello, my name is Ursula Johnson. They call me Little Bear. I'm of the Mi'kmaq First Nation from Eskisoni in the traditional district of Unamagi, or the Land of Fog, otherwise known as Cape Breton Island. And I'd like to thank you for coming here tonight to hear what it is that I have to say um, about the work that I do. I'm a full-time artist with a multidisciplinary approach to my practice. Presently, I'm working with traditional Aboriginal art forms, in particular Mi'kmaq basketry. Today I'd like to share with you some of the ideas that I have come to realize in the production of my works. Traditional Mi'kmaq basketry has made an extensive journey from Indian craft, to art, to collector's item, to artifact, and now it's on its way out into the archive. I'm going to say that again. Traditional Mi'kmaq basketry has made an extensive journey from Indian craft, to art, to collector's item, to artifact, and now on its way to the archive. Let me backtrack a little bit. Um, in 2001, I received a research grant to study traditional Aboriginal art forms in relation to the topic of nedgulimk, or self-sustainability. In my language, the term nedgulimk encompasses not just fending for yourself, but also your relationship to the land, um, the elements around you, everything that you understand, the greater picture of what is this world. Essentially, it's what I like to refer to as the Mi'kmaq world view. Excuse me, the Mi'kmaq world view. Um, during the research project, I met with several Mi'kmaq elders and asked them to share with me uh, what they felt the essence of a Mi'kmaq basket was and how this concept of Nedegolimk um, was controlled in the baskets. One of, my, one of the elders was my great-grandmother, Caroline Gould, who is now passed. Uh, she shared with me that she was in fear of the art dying out with our elders, because our youth are so far removed from nature that they don't have the knowledge of being able to carry on these traditions, such as Mi'kmaq basketry. She said in one of our interviews, these kids, they're not able to go out into the forest and identify the trees and tell you what type of tree it is, let alone make a basket from that tree. I realized that I was one of those kids that she was referring to. From that point on, I made it my promise to myself and my lifelong ambition that I would try to understand what the essence of a Mi'kmaq basket was, and to adhere that concept and ideologies of Nedugulimk into my everyday life. Then, in 2009, I began to leave the practices that I was formerly trained in at the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, such as photography and silk screening, and instead had begun to learn how to properly identify and ecologically harvest a tree from the forest in order to prepare the materials for weaving. Then I began to weave. At first, I was imitating baskets created by my great-grandmother. This here is one of her baskets. It's the same age as me. I remember seeing this basket growing up, crawling on the floor, being a small child, picking it up, opening it. She taught me how to create the basic foundation of a basket, saying that the foundation was the most important element with a good, strong base, anything is possible. She taught me various techniques in manipulating the wood to create curls, twists, bends, and shapes that one could not imagine coming from a solid tree. She taught me that wood is not manipulated into doing something, but that the wood manipulates you into understanding what it can do. In 2010, I curated a 30-year retrospective of the works of my great-grandmother. This is one of the last baskets that she made. Working on this project inspired me in more ways than I can express. I researched the history of her baskets, 
her transformations, her contribution to the evolution of Mi'kmaq basketry, the process encouraged my own production of baskets. One of the first baskets I made was a fishing creel. The form was, and the, the structure of a traditional Mi'kmaq fishing creel, however, was highly decorated, so it kind of didn't fit as a fishing creel. The traditional use of a fishing creel would be when you take it out, you go fishing, you store all your fish in it, and then you take it home and you feed your family the fish. But this fishing creel was kind of more like a purse. So you'd wear it, you put your money in it, and you'd go to the store to pay for your farmed fish, you take it home, and you feed your family with it. After completing the form of the fishing creel, I began to explore more of the historical context of which the Mi'kmaq baskets had become an object of commodity. More specifically, an object of commodity in the world of art, like collectors, galleries, and museums. So I pushed the idea a bit further of the Mi'kmaq basket by deconstructing and manipulating the function and image of the basket. These types of explorations allowed for traditional forms to take on new identities and change the way that Mi'kmaq baskets are viewed, categorized, collected, exhibited, and later archived. I was compelled to create a prototype of the new Mi'kmaq basket, a prototype that I would refer to as the, the Obaltek basket. Obaltek means it's not right. Uh, referring to the fact that upon further investigation of the Mi'kmaq basket, one would see that there's something that's just not right with it, with the form or the historical context of which it's been created in. Imagine having these forms studied, tagged, cataloged, and archived in a humidity and temperature-controlled museum storage room. And in looking at the collections and museums of Mi'kmaq baskets, there would be a sudden shift in the form, a missing period, perhaps. Gerald McMaster, who's a Plains Cree and Blackfoot art historian and critic, argues that early Western knowledge of Aboriginal creative expressions have been so far removed from Aboriginal communities that the museum visitor, upon seeing old artifacts, must have sensed that the Aboriginal people were long extinct. Indeed, museological discourse was about the past verging on necromancy. So essentially, he's saying that there were like these strange exotic objects that embodied what these extinct people would have been. These prototypes, these Obaltek forms, have been created by someone who has grown up in a completely different world, being me, than my great-grandmother had. I needed to say something in my language in order to be able to translate it better to you. Being an Aboriginal, an urban Aboriginal migrant, has contributed to the development of these new prototypes of the Obaltek form. Because of practicing Nedgulimk, my relationship to the land, to the elements, and having a sense of the world of which I live in, and the greater picture, it's kind of changed everything else, including the way that baskets are going to be perceived. Well, Thank you.